are you guys? Thank you for coming. We appreciate it so much. <clears throat> We've got a big treat in store, and we have little bodies back here that are ready to go. So I have a quick couple of announcement, announcements to make. Uh, you all know the cell phone drill, so please turn that off. It's quite fine if you want to take pictures during the uh, concert, and, uh, but, and we are recording it. It won't be live streamed, but it'll be on our YouTube channel where our plays are. So you can share that with uh, grandparents and the who couldn't make it. Uh, this year we've been uh, kind of focusing on C.S. Lewis some, and there's actually a movie that was out. I think it stopped in the theaters now, but you're going to want to look for it. It's called The Most Reluctant Convert, and uh, we were able to go see it just before it ended. It's a small British uh, film company, Christian that, that uh, made this film and promoted it, and I highly recommend it. They say they're going to make others, too, so we'll be on the lookout for those. So I looked um, to see what C.S. Lewis said about Christmas, and I've put a few in the announcements, and the kids have, I, and I have been talking about them a little, but I, I, I found today this the backwards of what you would have thought. Those C.S. Lewis called the birth of Jesus the central event in the history of Earth, and the grand miracle, he had a touch of Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge when it came to Christmas. In an essay that he first published, published in 1957, What Christmas Means to Me, he called the religious festival important and obligatory. But he, and he grumbled about gift giving and card sending, which he dismissed as a commercial racket. Things are given as presents which no mortal ever bought for himself, gaudy, useless gadgets, novelties, because no one else was ever fool enough to make their like before, have we no better use for materials, human skill, and time than to spend them all on this rubbish? I wish I could do a British accent, but it would have not been good. <clears throat> uh, he also asked, can it really be my duty to buy and receive all of this junk every winter just to help the shop stay open? <laughs> the pictures, which are stamped Xmas cards, have absolutely nothing to do with the sacred holiday. My brother even sat by a woman on a bus, and as it passed the church with the crib outside, she said, oh, they bring religion into everything. Look, now they're dragging it into Christmas. On a serious note, I want to give one of the precious, most precious comments that he made about Christmas, and then we'll get started. This is in Miracles. The central miracle asserted by Christians is the incarnation. God made man. And every other miracle prepares for this, exhibits this, or results from it. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God.
Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 3, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, 31, and God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But mankind sinned and rebelled against God, and God required that we would need a saver to save us from our sins. So God, so God sent prophets to tell us about the Savior he would send. Isaiah seven fourteen. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Micah 5, 2, but you, O Bethlehem, but you, O Bethlehem, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel. Isaiah 45, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Centuries later, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, saying, Luke 1, 30 through 33. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of, the fa of his father David, and he will reign over his house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Luke 1, 46 and 47. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with the child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Luke 2, 8 through 14. And in the same region, and in the same region, there were shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, saying, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that shall be for all the nations. For, this, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel of the, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased.
20. <clears throat> when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. But all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Matthew 1, 2. Matthew Matthew 2, 1b. Now after Jesus was Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. And Matthew 2, 9 through 11. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw this child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. <laughs>
2, 12, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. After Jesus grew up, he fulfilled all the prophecies about him perfectly, and the Apostle Paul told about this in his first letter to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And the writer of Hebrews said it, he said it this way in Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now each year, as we remember the baby Jesus and the manger, let us also remember the reason Jesus came, to save us from our sins. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So it is with great celebration that we all say, John 1, 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Elementary choir, could you give them one more round of applause, please? Well done. And now I'll give you a picture moment, 15 seconds. I'll get out of the way. If you'd like to snap a picture, that's perfectly fine. You can uh, stand up, move around. Smile, you guys. It's picture time. You did great. It's wonderful. Are we good? Okay. Um, and now they're going to go and take off their costumes and come sit with you, parents. So watch out for them. And uh, well done. You now you may go. Wiseman, you want to lead the way? Thank you so much. And while they are transitioning, you get to sing with us. So if you would please stand, grab your program. We have it ready for you to do, O Come All Ye Faithful, one verse in Latin and one verse in English. If you're not sure of the Latin, it's A E E O U. Just sound it out, do our best. Ready?
Now we present the 5th through 12th grade choir, the chorale, and they will start with Joy in Judea. Grant us peace.
that was lovely. Now the gentlemen are going to exit and we're going to feature the ladies on a, an excerpt from Handel's Messiah. This is a special arrangement as a learning choir. We're about exposure and experience. So I hope you enjoy this. Pour into us a child is born. This is a gentleman's Christmas. Oh, yeah. 
to it. So Gideon, you ready, sweet? We'll play the cajon for us on this one.
If you would like a picture moment with these guys too, I'll give you 10 seconds for that. And while you're doing that, uh, they have some refreshments on the portico as we go. I'm told to please ask you to take the mug. Okay, Sarah said, please take it. It's your gift, okay? So um, they're just uh, a special treat for you. And let me sit down out of the picture. Um, Mr. Ben Casey has agreed to come give us our benediction. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for all the help with the getting things ready. We could use a little help cleaning up. So if you're inclined to help that way, that'd be great. Mr. Casey. Thank you. Just to let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you so much. And we praise you uh, this evening, Lord, for this wonderful uh, presentation where we can glorify you. Lord, we just ask that you uh, help each one of us uh, not focus on the gaudy gadgets and the rubbish uh, that can so cloud our minds during this season, Lord, that we would focus on you, the child that you sent to die on the cross for our sins, but just to be born in this manger here at Christmas, Lord, that we would focus there, Lord. And we just praise you for all that you have done for us and in, in our lives, Lord. We just thank you for these children on the stage. Uh, that you are preparing their hearts and their minds uh, for this world, Lord, and for eternity. And we thank you for all these parents. Lord, would you just uh, uh, just provide a hedge of protection around each one of these families as we go out tonight, but also throughout the month, Lord. And we just praise and thank you for the opportunity that Coram Deo gives us. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>